The Smith family was elated as they embarked on their long-awaited vacation to a quaint, historic American home they had rented through him. Nestled in a serene countryside, the house exuded charm with its white picket fence, wraparound porch, and ivy-covered walls. Little did they know, their idyllic vacation would soon take a sinister turn. As they settled into the house, the Smiths called and they believed their luck. Each room was adorned with antique furniture, and the atmosphere was imbued with a sense of nostalgia. The first few days were filled with laughter, exploration, and the promise of relaxation. On the fourth morning, however, the family awoke to an unsettling realization their youngest daughter, Emily, was missing. Panic set in as they scoured the house and its surroundings, but Emily was nowhere to be found. Frantic, they called the local authorities who launched a search operation. Hours turned into days, yet Emily remained vanished without a trace. With heavy hearts, the Smiths continued their vacation, hoping that the authorities would find their daughter soon. But as the days passed, the sense of unease deepened. Strange occurrences began to plague their stay. Items would go missing only to reappear in odd places, and eerie sounds echoed through the halls at night. Mrs. Smith S. prized necklace vanished, and Mr. Smith S. car keys inexplicably moved from the kitchen to the bedroom. Their eldest son, Michael, started acting strangely too. He became withdrawn and would often stare blankly at the walls. One evening, he whispered to his sister, Lily, that he heard Emily S. voice calling to him from the basement. Lily, terrified, told her parents, but when they investigated, the basement was empty and there was no sign of Emily. As despair settled over the family, they realized they were trapped. Attempts to leave the house were met with an inexplicable force preventing them from crossing the threshold. They were prisoners in their own vacation rental. Lily, determined to uncover the truth, decided to explore the house in detail. She stumbled upon a dusty old journal in the attic. Its pages were filled with eerie tales of disappearances dating back decades. The journal spoke of a malevolent presence that fed on the energy of those trapped within the house, causing them to vanish one by one. As the Smiths delved deeper into the journal, they discovered a ritual that, according to the writings, could potentially break the curse, but it required a sacrifice, a painful decision that no family should ever have to make. The ritual involved relinquishing something of great value, something that could never be replaced. With heavy hearts, they realized they had to offer up their cherished memories, the very essence of their vacation, to save their remaining family members. Tearfully, they followed the steps outlined in the journal, hoping against hope that their sacrifice would end the nightmare. In a climactic and emotionally charged scene, the family gathered in the attic, surrounded by the trinkets and photographs that had made their vacation special. Each member shared their fondest memories, reliving the joy they had experienced before the darkness descended upon them. As the last memory was shared, an otherworldly gust of wine swept through the attic, extinguishing the candles they had lit for the ritual. For a moment, an eerie silence enveloped them, followed by a sensation of weightlessness. The house seemed to sigh, as if releasing a long-held breath. When the smiths opened their eyes, they found themselves standing outside the house. The curse had been broken. But the house stood as a silent witness to the darkness it had harbored. With Emily still missing, the Smiths returned home, forever haunted by the vacation that had turned into a nightmare. They clung to the memories they had shared in the attic, treasuring them as a reminder of the love and strength that had carried them through the darkness. And so, the tale of the vanishing vacationers became a whispered legend in the small town, a chilling reminder that even the most picturesque settings can hide unimaginable horrors. Twilight shadows played on the flight of the old building as Allison approached the door of room 307. Her heart raced wildly, and her nervous fingers fumbled with the key in the lock. She had rented this apartment for a week. The idea of escaping the city hustle and relaxing seemed wonderful, but something inside her whispered caution. Stepping across the threshold, Allison felt a pleasant sense of novelty. The apartment was tastefully decorated, light tones, stylish furniture, a view from the window onto the park. Despite slightly dusty surfaces, it appeared to be a perfect refuge. Night fell quickly. Under the covers, in the embrace of the soft bed, Allison began to unwind. But suddenly, in the silence, vague rustlings could be heard. She sat up on her elbows, straining her ears. 
The rustling grew clearer, as if someone was murmuring within the walls. Perhaps it has just an old house creaking, Allison thought, trying to convince herself. However, each creak and sound gave her the sensation that someone else was in the apartment, something alive but invisible. The following days grew even stranger. When Allison left her belongings in one place, they would be found in another. She began to feel watched, everywhere and always, but when she turned around, no one was there. Fear started to consume her. She spent nights in sleeplessness, trying to decipher the mystery of this apartment. Once, waking up to an odd sound, she decided to take matters into her own hands. Grabbing a flashlight, she embarked on an investigation. Her footsteps echoed loudly in the silence as she explored the corridors. As she approached one of the walls, the whisper became more distinct. Dante leave. A voice whispered, as if a ghost was trying to convey its pain. Allison shivered and clutched her heart. It seemed as though the shadow on the wall quivered, as if alive. She switched off the flashlight, plunging the room into total darkness, and then she heard footsteps. Invisible footsteps were drawing near. She held her breath, her eyes straining to see something in the darkness, but nothing was visible. The steps grew nearer until she felt a touch on her cheek. Allison screamed and recoiled, hitting the wall behind her. Please, stay. A whisper sounded next to her ear. She panicked and fled the room, not looking back. Yet, the whisper followed her like her shadow. Determined to finally unravel the mystery of the apartment, Allison began researching the former landlord as history. In the local library, she found old newspaper clippings. One headline caught her eye. Tragic death of young woman in room 307. According to the article, the landlord had been obsessed with his former girlfriend. They had lived in this apartment, but one day he killed her in a fit of jealousy. Her body was found in room 307. Ever since, locals claimed that the girl ass soul lingered in the apartment. Allison realized she called in to escape the past landlord, just as she called in to escape herself. The soul of the former girlfriend still haunted these walls, and it didn't he want to let Allison go. Now Allison stood at a crossroads to confront this ominous presence or to flee, leaving the apartment behind. But she decided that she wouldn't he run anymore. She returned to her apartment, prepared to confront the soul that didn't he want to release her. The night was as dark as her decision. Everything around was quiet, but Allison felt she wasn't he alone. Shadows began to take form. The soul of the former girlfriend stood before her, looking at her through eyes full of bitterness and sorrow. You can't leave me, her voice sounded, weak but insistent. Allison met the soul ass gaze and said softly yet decisively, you must let me go. This apartment is no longer your home. Tense moments hung in the air, then the soul began to dissolve slowly, like smoke. The apartment grew brighter, the sense of presence vanished. Allison remained alone in the room, and only now did she realize the relief she felt. The past receded, and now she could begin her life anew. But even as she left the sinister apartment, she felt a gentle gaze upon her, a gaze filled with gratitude and forgiveness, and she knew that the soul of that unfortunate girl had finally found peace. The summer evening was saturated with picturesque sunlight as a group of friends arrived at the luxurious lakeside house they had rented through Erm. The house stood tall above a tranquil lake, enveloped by dense woods. Initially, they were all delighted by its beauty and seclusion. However, by the next morning, they realized that something was amiss. No neighbors around, no cell phone signal, no internet. Their isolation took on an oppressive quality as if they had found themselves in a different realm. They held a campfire party that evening, trying to relax and forget about the oddities. But in the darkness, they heard faint rustling in the bushes and felt an unfamiliar gaze upon them. By the next morning, one of their friends, Mike, was gone. His bed was neatly made, but his personal belongings and traces had simply vanished. Fear began to spread among the others like poison, making them doubt each other. They started noticing strange figures flickering by the house windows at night and hearing ghostly whispers that terrified them in the darkness. The group decided to unravel the mystery of Micah's disappearance. They searched the house, hoping to find any clue, but found nothing. 
Through online research, they managed to unearth some information about the house. It turned out to be situated on the site of an ancient ritual place where dark ceremonies honoring ancient gods once took place. Their suspicions led them to a peculiar altar hidden deep within the woods. They discovered ancient runes and symbols carved into stones around the altar. With each passing day, their fear grew, and the friends began to feel that ancient forces were infiltrating their dreams, trying to draw them into their dark world. Mournful Mike appeared before them in a vision. He warned them that the ancient forces wanted to reclaim what was theirs and that they urgently needed to leave this place. The group gathered and resolved to do whatever it took to save themselves. They began studying the runes and rituals, hoping to find a way to protect themselves. But every step they took was met with resistance from the ancient forces. They encountered visions of nightmares, their minds teetering on the brink. Trust among them became completely distorted, and each began to suspect that one of them might be connected to the ancient rituals. As the friends delved deeper into their research, they discovered that the power of the ancient gods was intricately tied to the surrounding natural elements, water, wind, and fire. They started crafting protective rituals, using these elements in an attempt to ward off the dark forces. Under strain, battling the dark forces, the friends prepared for the ultimate ritual. They pooled all their strength and knowledge to perform a protective rite that could repel the ancient forces and save their lives. Through hours of reciting ancient incantations, creating magical circles, and interacting with the nature around the house, they fought. Grinding and commotion mixed with ghostly sounds, seeming like echoes from times past. Finally, it all culminated, and the friends felt the grip of the ancient forces start to wane. They gazed at the sky, where clouds dispersed, and sensed that they had managed to break the dark connection between this place and the ancient gods. With time, fear and distrust began to recede, replaced by relief and a sense of unity. The friends realized they had lived through something incredible and managed to preserve their lives. Mike returned to them, and though he was no longer the same person, he also played a part in unraveling this terrifying mystery. Over time, they left the lakeside house, but the memories of those events stayed with them forever. They understood that the world sometimes hides deep and dark secrets, and that forces beyond the realm of science can be far more real than they could have imagined.